third form of energy that's produced by the bomb is radiation. And again, this is what distinguishes atomic weapons from conventional weapons in addition to their magnitude, is the fact that it produces radiation. Radiation is uh, a sort of a shortened term for something called ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation simply means that you've produced enough energy that a, an atom, which consists of a nucleus and electrons around it, can have electrons pulled off it. So the process of ionization is literally yanking an electron off of an atom. Now, that doesn't necessarily do much harm, um, but if you happen to affect a, an organism's DNA by doing that, by destabilizing one of the atoms, you can render that DNA to have a different structure. That may, again, not result in any effects on the, on the organism, but it may also result in a mutation that could lead to all sorts of health issues, particularly cancer, and even in genetic mutations that can be transferred down from generation to generation. So as a result of um, this radiation effect, which is you can't see it, you can't feel it, it made this bomb feel very different to many people afterwards. Those who survived, who perhaps were unscathed by the bomb's blast or heat, had escaped the fire, had escaped getting hit by the pressure of the bomb, some of them got sick. Some of them had um, problems with their hair falling out, for instance. If they survived the, the bomb, they had a pretty high chance of actually losing their hair as a result of radiation sickness. That's what they were ultimately experiencing. But no one knew how to diagnose this at the time because it was, it was completely unexpected um, in the weapon. People were exposed to radiation in two big ways. The first was initially, if they were exposed to the initial blast, a lot of neutrons and other uh, radiation particles are produced. And that's, of course, could, can cause all sorts of damage. And if it's a high enough dose, people, um, it was fatal and they would die immediately. But if they were exposed to a smaller level of radiation, they were likely to survive and experience radiation sickness. The second way they could get exposed to radiation was that the dust from the blast, from pulverizing all these buildings and smacking the ground so hard, would get remobilized and brought up into the mushroom cloud. And then when it, it started to rain shortly after the um, bombs were set off and that rain picks up the dust that's in the air and brings it down onto the ground and concentrates it. And it contains a lot of atoms that have become radioactive. So this is a secondary form of radiation that people were exposed to. It's called fallout. Um, in the case of when it's brought down with rain, it was called black rain. The long-term effects from radiation are genetic. They're mutations in some way. People, as I mentioned, experienced radiation sickness, often losing their hair. Uh, there's a form of, it, when someone experiences a burn and they're exposed to radiation in the process, often the scar material for the burn will, will expand and, and kind of form this very lumpy surface called a keloid scar. The keloid scars um, are unique to the radiation burn-related injuries. They tended to go away with time from people but it was another mystery that people had to solve from a medical perspective. And then longer term effects include um, various forms of cancer, leukemia, thyroid cancer, breast cancer, um, in victims who did survive the bombing but were exposed to radiation. And of course, in many cases, uh, we see genetic effects passed on to children who were either in utero, so they were in their mother's womb when they were exposed to radiation, or even in children who were born um, after the bomb took place in the first place or were actually conceived after the bomb took place, but their parents had been exposed to radiation uh, poisoning at some point.